Hello everyone. My name is Yoshihito Omura. I am a curator of National Museum of Nature and Science in Japan. I'm going to introduce microcrystal test that was developed in 1930s. It is an old technique, but still very useful for detection of several kinds of lichen substances. I hope this presentation will be helpful to understand the significance and procedures of microcrystal test. Okay, let's get started. This presentation is a modified version of the slides used in the mini workshop Travel with Lichen Microcrystal Test held on 17th December 2021. I would like to thank James for organizing this workshop and everyone who participated. Nowadays, nobody doubts the significance of chemistry in lichenology. Chemistry has been studied for over a century and has been shown to be useful in both identification and taxonomy. It has been proved in many species that there is one or more patterns of chemical composition within a species. For example, Palmotrema tinctorum has atranoline and lecanoic acid as the major substances. In comparison, Usnea subfluidana has two chemotypes. To detect lichen substances, it is known that color spot test and KLC are the most friendly method for many lichenologists. HPLC is also commonly used in some laboratories. It is suited for detection of minor substances and quantitative analysis. Besides them, there is a method called microcrystal test, which was previously used by many lichenologists. It was developed in 1930s by Dr. Yasuhiko Asahina, who also developed a color spot test using paraffinian geamine. Many lichenologists, however, may think, microcrystal test, yeah, I have read about the method in a lichen textbook. It is an old technique developed nearly 100 years ago. We already have more accurate methods like TLC and HPLC, and no need to apply MCT to modern lichenology. But I still routinely use microcrystal test as a useful chemical analysis tool for identification and taxonomy of lichens. The reasons are, it is an inexpensive and simple process that does not require special equipment. Because of this, microcrystal test is also suitable for educational activities in a school and museum. For some substances, the detection capability is better than TLC or HPLC. For example, for the detection of fatty acid, and distinction between xylophoric acid and lecanoic acid, and so on. For some species, a fatty acid is very important taxonomic characteristic to recognize the taxon. For example, Flavfarmeria capillata contains capillaric acid, and Cetraria islandica contains proto-sterinic acid. So, we need to detect fatty acid anyway. However, on TLC, fatty acids are only visible when sprayed with sulfuric acid or are immersed in the water, but they may be sometimes overlooked and can be very difficult to identify according only from the spot position. On the other hand, HPLC is difficult to detect fatty acid, lacking benzene rings. So, HPLC is generally not suitable for fatty acid detection. 
Although microcrystal test is an effective method for detecting fatty acid, many lichenologists hesitate to use it because it is considered inaccurate. It takes some skill to carry out the several steps in the process successfully. There are many regions in the literature. You may not be sure which regent should be used. Some of the regent, for example, ortotrolizin and aniline, will spoil in a few months. If you perform microcrystal tests only occasionally, these experiments, including preparations, may be tedious. Crystallization time differs depending on lichen substances. Some crystallize immediately, while others take overnight to appear. Many researchers don't know about this nature and may give up. To make microcrystal tests more friendly, I would say three reasons are enough for the test. They are GE, OT, and KK. The recent compositions are like this. Among them, KK is only for the detections of saracenic and norstictic acids. If you want to check fatty acid, GE only would be okay. OT is nowadays known to cause bladder cancer for the chemical plant workers so be careful to use it. I usually test all three reasons at the same time on a single glass slide, but in some cases, I may omit KK or test GE alone. How to perform microcrystal tests will be introduced in the following video, and we are planning to present microcrystal test guide in a future paper. Regent and equipment to be used in the following video are shown here. Now, let's try to perform microcrystal tests. Have fun 